is on the Sikh of Kairach, Chelek Yudches, Kairach Beis, Book 18 of the Sikhs, the second Sikh of Kairach. In this week said, uh, so it's told that Hashem said to Moshe and Aaron, when they faced the insurrection, they faced the rebellion of Kairach, Hashem said, separate from this congregation, and I will finish them off Kerega in a moment, says Hashem. So the Eden, so Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, told Hashem, asked by Hashem, you are the God of all the spirits, you know, the spirits of all flesh. Shall one man sin and you, God, will become angry against the whole community? That's what they said. The reason that before this rationale, before this uh, uh, is before this uh, claim to Hashem, shall you get angry when only one sins? Shall you get angry on the whole community? Why did they introduce that? First by saying, Kel Hashem, you are Elikei Aluches you are the God who understands the spirit of all flesh. Rashi explains. Why did they introduce that? With Kel Elikei Aluches because Rashi says, what does it mean, Hashem, you are the God of the Ruches? You know the spirit, you know the Machshavis, you know the thoughts. And since before you all thoughts are revealed, and you know who is the sinner. So therefore, Moshe and Aaron are saying, that's the case that you know exactly who is sinful and who not. Shall one person be the sinner and you will get upset at the entire community? Hashem says, yeah, you said well. I do know and I will be let it be known who sinned and who didn't sin. However, what we don't understand, says Rebbe, is why is it necessary to emphasize that Hashem is the God that knows the thoughts of Cholbas of all flesh in order to give the claim that they said, shall you be angry at the entire community when only one person sinned? It would have been enough to say Hashem, you are the God of thoughts without adding that you know the thoughts of all flesh. Why the addition of all flesh? Moreover, is not understood. The Gemara Yerushalmi in a different set of halachas talk about somebody who hears, God forbid, the name of God being cursed in the unique way. That, um, in the unique way that requires a response of tearing your clothes. I might say unique way because that's if you use the name of God to, to I'll say it's called blessing God. It, it's, uh, it means the reverse. If you use the name of God to, uh, inverted commas, bless God. So if you hear it, from whether whether you hear the, the the opposite of blessing from a Jew or whether you hear it from a non-Jew, the one who hears it, the Jewish person who hears it, is obligated to tear his clothes. Why is that? Why even if he hears it from a non-Jew, um, cursing Hashem, why does he have to tear his clothes? But it says, I am Hashem, the prophet, the, the prophet in Yirmiya says, I am Hashem, the God of all flesh. Ah, it doesn't say... It says, the God of all flesh, which we say, Dirish Shalmi learns, when it says, I am Hashem, the God of all flesh, those words of all flesh, called Basar, means to include also not Jews. And since that's the case, that when this language is used, called Basar, it comes to include even non Jews. That's the intention of saying, called Basar. So we would want to. So now we have to understand here where it says, Hashem, you are the God that knows the thoughts of all flesh. Why is the need to add, to, to broaden the scope of Hashem, knowing the thoughts, even to call Basar to those who are non-Jews? And therefore, in other words, and that, and somehow that is needed to be an introduction. Shall one person sin and you get angry at everybody? I mean, even if they would have said, you are the God that knows the thoughts, without in broadening it to include also non-Jews, certainly that would be enough. We're talking here about the Jewish community. So this introduction with the emphasis of the Basar, if there's a place in Torah that would have fit because you want to be inclusive also of non-Jews, that would have been more appropriate by Avraham Avinu when he's coming to fight for Sadaim, 
which is similar to our case, because Moshe, because Avram asks, will Hashem, will you also destroy a tzaddik together with a rasha, a righteous person together with a wicked person? There we're not talking about Jews. But there, so there would have been appropriate to say that Hashem, you are the one who knows every, the thoughts of every flesh, of every person, including non-Jews. But there was no really no Jews there, but you know the tzaddik, you know the rashi, you know you know the thoughts of all. There it would be appropriate to be more inclusive and use that language, l'chol basar. But there it's not at all mentioned. There it just says, will the judge of the entire world not do justice? It doesn't broaden that concept by saying l'chol basar there. Base. Here the Rebbe jumps straight into the explanation. Explanation is... What was Moshe and Aaron's general claim? Their claim was like this. Since Hashem knows through his knowledge and through his divine individual um, providence, Ashkocha Pratis, he, he, he oversees all the details. Since he oversees all the details of everything, he knows clearly who's the real sinner. Right? Amongst the community... And really, there was only one true sinner in this whole Kerach instigation. As Rashi says, one person is a sinner, you're going to get angry at everybody. And as the Rebbe has spoken elsewhere in the Sicha, in the Chalik 13, at length, in explaining the Moshal that Rashi brings, what's the parable Rashi brings? Will you get angry at the whole community? He brings the following parable. It's like a king of flesh and blood that part of the part of the country part of the people of the country acted against him or part of the people of the country went went sour and the king doesn't know who sinned and who didn't so when he gets angry he punishes everybody but you God you know who's the sinner and the Rebbe explained what is the nuance of this marshal it's a very it's a very exact marshal that the community of Kairat that joined with him, they weren't actually sinful with an intention of rebelling against Hashem. They were seduced. They were uh, convinced by Kairat. They were sweet-talked. And therefore, they're not actually sinners in the pure sense of the world. They would be in the analogy like a, like what Rashi used now, Sarcha, spoiled, went sour. That some of the, the the country went sour on the king. It's 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 not that they sinned. It's that they were not faithful in the full sense. And this was the this was what Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron were tithing. Since Hashem knows the thoughts and He knows the difference between somebody who actually sinned in a willing, full, and in a um, rebellious way against God, and Hashem, you know who was just went sour and got, allowed himself to be pulled into the argument. You know that there was only one real rebellious, sinful person. And he was the one who caused, and therefore he's also responsible, he caused the others to sour from the entire community. So also, Hashem, you should also divide the, the, the reaction, and the reaction that you would deal with for sinful people should only be to one. And this is why we also understand that by Avram Avinu, why we, and somewhere by Avram Avinu, there isn't the need or the is not able to use that introduction. Hashem, you know the, you know the thoughts of all flesh. Why? Because there, the main issue was taka, the difference between a tzaddik and a rasha, somebody who had acted in Sodom improperly, or somebody who had acted righteously. There wasn't this middle, uh, uh, this middle. Cl- uh, uh, class of those who are just soured, not actually sinned, but allowed themselves to be pulled into sin. So here, Abraham doesn't have to call uh, on Hashem's knowledge of all the thoughts of man. He just says, you know who's a tzaddik, who's Rashi. You, you know Hashem. Uh, you know, you know Hashem, that some did good, some did bad. Will you allow them both to perish together? Here by Kairach, there's a, there's a middle ground. There are a group of Jews who joined into the rabble-rousing, but they're actually just um, people that, was, that were pulled in, deep down they're not really rebellious, sinful people. So here Moshe Aaron says, Hashem, you know the thoughts, you know who's really sinful, and you know who just soured. 
It's only one who's really sinful. Will you punish everybody? Gimel. According to this, we also understand why, why Rashi says the expression here, you Hashem know all the thoughts and you know who's the sinful one. And also in the answer of Hashem, Hashem says, I do know. He doesn't say, it is no. It's an active expression. Hashem, you know, and Hashem says, yes, I know. Not Hashem, it is known before you. And Hashem says, yes, it is known before No, you know, and then Hashem responds, yes, I know. <coughs> why, would it, why would I think that the language should have been used, it is known before you, because there's an expression that's very oft used in the uh, sayings of our sages, which goes like this, Golui v'yodua, it is known and re- it is revealed and known before the one who said and the world was, the fnei misha amar v'hayah elam. It is revealed and known before the one for God. And even Rashi uses that expression just a little bit before by saying, before you, God, are revealed all thoughts. So then one would assume that it would be appropriate to use that language and say, before you, Hashem, everything is known. Why does it say, you know everything, Hashem? There's a difference. What's the difference? We know that there's two levels of Hashem's knowledge and therefore an Hashem's Hashkoch Hashem's uh, um, supervision over his creatures. One level is the knowledge and supervision in a way where Hashem knows it. Everything is known and revealed before Hashem. Here we're going to talk about the subtle difference between Hashem knowing and things being known by Hashem. When things are, first let's start off with the level that ever starts Aleph, the way that Hashem knows and supervises in the way that it is known and re- it was revealed and known before him, not in a way where he's vested in it or clothed in it, but it rather it is automatically revealed and known before him. And even though also at this level, it's every detail that is known to him. However, since this knowledge is higher than God being, so to speak, vested in it and clothed in it, and at this, at this level of Hashem's knowledge, he's totally aloof and separated from the created beings. Therefore, this revealedness and knowledge of the creations is in one swoop. It's all the creatures and all the created beings equally are known to him. And it's higher, it's higher than a place where the, the deeds of the lower worlds of the created beings can have any effect on him. He's, 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 he's aloof and, and removed. And because he's so removed and aloof and so um, exalted, everything is known to him. Everything is revealed to him. But he's not knowing everything. Everything is known to him. In an equal way, and it's too high a level from those deeds to have any bearing on him, so to speak. Second level is the knowledge and the supervision that Hashem has in a way that he knows. In other words, so to speak, he is vested and engaged in knowing the things in a way where he's enclosed in them. And when we talk about that, then definitely there is a difference between the knowledge and the supervision based on the level of each particular created being. And that's why it's through that level of knowledge where we say, yes, Hashem does take very much interest into what's going on, what the created beings have done. And it's from that place where reward and punishment gets meted out based on the deeds of the created beings, the lower beings. This is what Ashi says, Hashem, you know, not it is known before you. (coughs) Hashem, you know, the deeds of all, because here what we're trying to talk about is the level where Hashem knows and supervises in the individual details from a place, from a level where reward and punishment get drawn from. More than that, in this we're talking about a level where Hashem's knowledge is in a way that it's enclosed, invested in the details of what Kairach and his community have done to the point where Hashem, so to speak, is going to, going to let, let it be known who actually sinned and who was only soured. Dalit. It's known that the sheet of the Rambam in the guide for the perplexed and the million of Uchim. What is the Rambam saying? 
Here we're going to talk a little bit about Ashkocha Pratis, just a, a, a general clarification, introduction, that we, we today mostly are, I would say, from birth. We're taught Ashkocha Pratis the way the Baal Shem Tov taught it. The Baal Shem Tov taught Ashkocha Pratis is that Hashem's um, supervision is on every single detail, even a leaf that falls, blows, and a blade of grass that blows in the wind. Every single aspect of creation is in all its details, supervised by Hashem. But this is not the, the opinion necessarily of all the preceding thinkers and teachers. So the Rambam has a different approach, Tashkach Pratis, but soon we'll see that it's not such a different approach. But it seems at the outset to be a little bit different, a lot different. The Rambam teaches the Meryl Nebuchim that only on man, only on the species of man, is there a detailed supervision supervision over the detailed actions and behavior and, and what's going on with man. It's only on the human species. But by the other creatures of doimeim, inanimate objects, tzimeach, vegetation, chai, animal life, the hashkoch, the supervision Hashem has over them is only on the general species, not on the, all the details of what goes on with them. And when we talk about humans themselves, so the supervision is not on everybody equally. It depends. It's, it's, it's a gradient level. It goes according to levels. It depends on the level of dveikos, of cleaving that the individual person has in his mind to Hashem. And those that are cut off, they're, they're foolish, and they rebel against Hashem. The wicked people, that they totally don't have this cleaving to Hashem in their minds. So by they, Hashem takes away his individual supervision. And Hashem relegates them to a supervision just like on the animal and vegetation and inanimate life. That's what David HaMelech says, that Rishoyim are compared to behemoths. They just get supervised in a very general way. And as it says, that when Chas Shalom, the Jewish people, sin, says in the Torah, Hashem says, I will hide my face for, from them. And then what will f- many tzoros will find them. And then the person will say, Oy vey, because Hashem is not in me, that's why these troubles have found me. In other words, because the Torah is saying, because the Jews are sinful and they tear themselves away from Hashem, that's why Hashem takes away his d- detailed supervision, and he leaves them at the mercy of Mikre. Mikre is happenstance. Well, let's throw you out and see what happens. And the tzoris also come in a way of Metziah. They just happen to come. As it looks like they're like they're coming alone. In other words, because they're, it's not seen that they're detailedly supervised by Hashem. Because we're talking about Jews that have taken themselves away from the connection to Hashem. And Amam says, the more you connect with Hashem, the more you have Hashem's detailed providence on you. So since the Hashkoch, since the supervision over wicked, showing, it's just like on the other forms of, of life, inanimate, uh, animal, and, and vegetation, only a general supervision. So we understand that even when they get punished from Hashem, from above, even when it's not in a way where they're just thrown out, so to speak, to chance, even when a place where it's obvious that this punishment is coming by supervision of Hashem, just like in Kairach, what's going to happen is something is going to happen that's not at all just by chance. The earth doesn't just open up. However, the punishment and that the punishment and conduct with them will not seem to be in a detailed way. It'll be, it'll be in a general way. Like the Rambam says, people that remove themselves from God, Hashem will treat them in a general supervision, just like animal life. And because of that, it was easy to kill them. In other words, once Hashem takes them out once they've sinned and they've taken themselves away from the more detailed supervision of Hashem. So even when Hashem is bringing something detailed, like opening up the earth, to swallow them, 
but they are not getting the detailed hashkocha. Hashem, so to speak, just allow, uh, uh, so to speak, more aloof from them. Therefore, it's easier for them to be killed. Whereas if there would be more detailed supervision on them, it wouldn't be, we couldn't say this language, and I was quoting this language from um, the Rambam, in Mary Nebuchim, Kal Lahargam, easy to kill them. According to this opinion, however, we wouldn't understand. So what is Meshach Rabbeinu and Aaron asking Hashem, you know all the thoughts, you're going to get angry. One person will sin, you get angry on everybody. Well, we're talking about sinners. We just said now that sinners are only supervised in a general way, like vegetation, for example. So why is Meshach and Aaron asking by Hashem, Hashem, please get yourself involved and see exactly who sinned and who didn't sin? I mean, that's asking for something unusual, because usually if somebody sinned, they would take themselves away from that more detailed connection to Hashem. It says the Rebbe in five, and it really is no question. I will understand this for the fact that the Mittal Rebbe explains that really the Rambam's understanding of Ashkoch Pratis is no, is no contradiction to the Baal Shem Tov's teaching of Ashkoch Pratis. Now this is going to be Something we have to understand because it uh, uh, seems to be that there is so it's a vast worlds between them, right? We said the Baal says Ashkoch is on every single thing, even a blade of grass. Rambam says that it's only the detail Ashkoch is only on humans and more particularly only those that are in sync with Hashem's plan. They get the very detailed Ashkoch. People that are Shoyim, that are wicked, even humans, they don't get that. So the, the, the Rebbe, according to the middle, Rebbe says no. There's two kinds of Hashem's Ashkocha. And we'll understand that the Rambam, that the, that the Rambam, the Baal Shem Tov really are more in line than what seems at the outset. He says the Rebbe like this. There's a Hashkocha. Number one, there's a Hashkocha Pnimis. There's an internal or a, a, a detailed supervision where the supervision is open and obvious. It's not covered over in the... Um, it's not obscured or covered over in the garments of nature. And about that kind of Ashkocha, which is open, you see that Hashem is obviously, obviously and openly supervising, says the Rambam, that's going to be dependent on the level of a person's connection to Hashem. And by the other lower levels of life, lower than human, and by humans that are wicked, that are Shoim, you don't have this Ashkocha. You don't have this kind of open supervision of Hashem. In a, uh, in a in a detailed way on each detail. There, that that open supervision of Hashem will only be in the general species that Hashem is guiding. But then there's a second type of Ashkocha, that is the Ashkocha Chitzenis, the supervision the way it is in a more external way, where it's hidden. This, this Ashkocha, this supervision is hidden in the garments of nature. Where it's Hashem operating, but you don't see him, he's not felt, it's totally obscure. And this Ashkacha is on all, even according to the Rambam, says that, is on all created beings, exactly like the Mashantam says. So it means that even according to the Rambam, there's Ashkacha Protis on Rishoim, except that it's Ashkacha that they don't feel, it's more in an external way, it's enclosed in nature and it's obscured by nature. So it's not obvious that every detail has come from Hashem. And this is not at all any contradiction to what we said, that when a person sins, he says, Oi, I just, it happened upon me, these terrible things. These terrible things just happened to come my way. As the Rambam says, Rambam had, had translated that being, a person is just thrown to happenstance, thrown to uh, to coincidence, so to speak. <laughs> that's No, that's not a contradiction, because that itself is by Hashem Zashkach What is What does it say? Hashem says, if you sin, I will hide my face from you. That's not that Hashem takes away his supervision. It's just that Hashem says, I will hide my face. In other words, I will ponai, face, deeper, innermost hashkocha. I will hide the inner hashkocha. I will hide the obvious hashkocha. And therefore, what will happen is, because I'm hiding the the inner hashkocha in, in, a, in, a, in a revealed way, so the hashkocha, the divine supervision, is not in a revealed way. Which means the person is able to think that it's not coming from Hashem. It's just coming as happenstance. It's just the way the world works. 
just co- coincidence. But the MS, of course, Hashem's Ashkach is on every detail. According to this, we'll understand. So what the Rebbe said here, um, what the Rebbe has just explained to us is, is groundbreaking. According to the Middle Rebbe, that the Rambam, when he says that the Hashkoch is only on the general species and not on every individual, that's the Hashkoch in, in a revealed way. Revealed way, it's Hashem's Hashkoch is revealed on those, on those creatures, humans, that are in sync with him, tzaddikim. Those that are rejectful of him, so to speak, Hashem's Hashkocha is in a concealed way. They don't feel it. That's why they think that they've been thrown to, to coincidence. But really, it's Hashem guiding everything, just like the Baal Shem Tov says. According to this, we'll understand why Moshe Rabbeinu and say, Hashem, you know all thoughts, and therefore, why are you going to get angry against the whole community if only one person sinned? Why? As we said before, the words, Hashem, you know kol basar, you know the thoughts of all flesh, this includes also non-Jews. And as the Rogit Shavar going says, when it says in the Yirmiya, I am Hashem, the God of all flesh, that means that Hashem also supervises B'nai Noyach, the children of Noyach, non-Jews. And this is what Moshe Rabbeinu is basing himself on, saying, <coughs> I'm asking you, they, they say like this, Hashem, we're asking you to get involved in the nitty-gritty asking you to discern between those that just soured and joined the fray and the one who actually is the sinner. Even though all of the community that's involved in this rabble, this whole rabble, this whole insti- this whole community, they're all Rishoyim. They're not connected to Hashem. They've allowed themselves to be drawn to a place where their connectivity to Hashem is not there, obviously. But since Hashem, you know thoughts, and you know the thoughts of Kol or even by a non-Jew, and even by them, Hashem, you have an individual supervision. Even though they're not connected openly to, Hashem, to, to their, their minds are not openly cleaving to Hashem. But since, nonetheless, Hashem, you are your damn, Hashem, you know all the thoughts, even of those that are not connected to you in a revealed way. And you know them in a detailed way. So therefore, they say, we want to call on this Hashkoch, Hashem, that you have and, and ask you, so will you let everybody suffer, even though the real sinner was only one. So they're calling on Hashem's Ashkocha even to those that are Rishoyim. Because they were all Rishoyim. That whole community was in some sense Rishoyim. They allowed themselves to be dragged into it. But there was only one real sinner. But in order to get into the into the discerning between them, they have, Meshavenu are calling on Elekei Kolbasa. You know the spirit of all flesh, even those that are not connected to you. For example, even B'nai Naya. Zion. Even though when a Jew does does not do Hashem's will. As we just said before, the hashkoch on him, the supervision on him is just like, is similar to the way Hashem supervises over the nations of the world, a more external kind of supervision, which is enclosed in the clothing of nature. Nonetheless, there's a fundamental difference between the way that this is enclosed in nature, between the way it applies to a Jew and the way, lahabdil, it applies to a non by non-Jews, since their chai is there, where they source their energy from, is from a level that's called chitzoni, it's more external. It's from Shem Elikim, the name of Elikim, the name Elikim is the gematria of Ateva, has the same numerical value of Ateva, 86. The name Elikim spells in numerology is 86. The word Ateva, the nature, is in numerology, the gematria, 86. So the, therefore, since that's the source of energy, for the non-Jews, they are mainly under the influence of the laws of nature. And therefore, from the very outset, the supervision of the over them is only from Shem Elikim, from the name, name of Hashem, which is Elikim, from the level in godliness which is enclosed in the way in the, in the ways of nature, which is not the case by Yidden, by Jews. Their energy stems from the name of Yud Kei Vav Kei, the ineffable name of Hashem, therefore, which is a higher than nature name, therefore the Ashkach of God is on them, individual supervision of uh, uh, associated with the Jews in just by default is from Shem Havaya, the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, which is a more inner and more revealed form of Ashkach of supervision by Hashem. I, we just said though, that when Yidin do not do the will of Hashem, 
the hashgacha, the, the supervision of them is enclosed in the laws of nature, in the clothing of nature. It doesn't mean that the supervision of Shem Havaya, the inner supervision of Shem Yudke, of the name of Yudke Vavke, gets taken from them. Because whatever situation the Jew is, he's still always called Am Keroivai, is people that are close to Hashem, they're close to Shem Havaya, they're always called Hashem's near people. As the, as the Chazal tells us, Hashem says, whether they sin or they don't sin, they're still my children. So they're always close to him. However, the supervision on them is from the name Yudke Vavke. If they sin, the supervision of them is from the name Yudke Vavke, the way it is enclosed in the name Elikim that garbs it and, and, and puts a twist of nature or a limitation of nature Onto it. And that's what it says. If Shalom, did you sin? Hashem says, I will hide my face. In other words, I will place a, 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 a concealment over the level that's called Ponai, over the level that's called Pnimios. And therefore, it'll be, a, but you will, therefore, through contemplation, be able to see, even through that concealment, because within that concealment, there's really the Shema Abayah, there's really the inner supervision. Therefore, through that, because it's really emanating from Hashem's Shem Havaya, it's really also a, it just has to be pierced through, and really there's a revealed supervision of over every Jew, even if they're not really with Hashem. It's obscured, but it's still there. Now, Ches, now I'll understand that the, what does it mean? And what is the purpose of Hashem's hiding his face from Jews when they don't do his his his, his mitzvahs in a proper way? And what, what did we say happens when Hashem hides his face? That leads to the fact that the Jew can say, well, maybe it's just coincidence that this and this happened to me. Lechel, you could ask, one second, what's the purpose of this? This seems to be self, this seems to be, uh, this seems to be, uh, Purposeless, in other words, the per- why does Hashem react this way when a Jew sins? It's not to punish, but it's in order to arouse Jews to do tshuva. But how can a Jew be aroused to tshuva if Hashem is hiding his face? Why would he go back to Hashem when Hashem's face is being hidden? In other words, he's suffering, right? God forbid, Hashem says, the Jew says, Oi, things that I don't like are happening. And it's going to mean breaking, come back to Hashem. No, but we just said the Jew saying these things happened upon me. If the Jew feels that they're only coincidence, why is he going to come back to Hashem? But isn't Hashem's intention about bringing these things to make him do tshuva? How is that going to help him do tshuva if he thinks? If you're taking away the detailed hashkocha and not letting him feel that this is coming directly from Hashem, so why will he go back to Hashem when those things happen? He's just announced that oh, those things are happening coincidentally. So why are you going to go back to Hashem? The whole purpose of letting these things happen is to bring him back to Hashem, because that's why Hashem brings negative things, only to kickstart the person to come back to him. But how will they come back if now that's it's not revealed that it's coming from him? Says the Rebbe, but the, is, as we said before, since within this hiddenness, the hiddenness is only from the external, deep down within, Hashem's supervision is also right now from Shema Vaya, on every single detail. So that's why Latent within it, hidden within it, is the koyach to potential to arouse by a Jew the feeling, the movement of teshuva coming back to Likus, is our godliness. On the contrary, since the supervision of the name of Abaya is there in that time, but how is it? It's there not in a way where you can connect to it in a it's there in a way, not in a way that you can connect to it in a revealed way. Because you don't see the Hashkocha. It's in a way of a histarti. It's in a hidden way. Which means that it, when it's not revealed, it means, but it's there. That means it relates more to the essence. And therefore, what's going on is it's really touching in an invisible way, in a sense, it's touching the essence. 
As we know, that tshuva that comes because of being far from Hashem really touches the person deeper down in a more essential way. And that's why it, 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 it is able to touch and achieve an effective change in the person's general state of being. You see, tshuva that tzaddikim do, you see, they're, they're, they're not, it's not like they're, in essence, far from Hashem. They may have done something a little wrong. When they do tshuva, it's a, a detailed tshuva. It's not that their whole essence changes. <coughs> it's just that their service of Hashem becomes, becomes better, becomes more complete. Here, when Hashem, when, it, when somebody has gone away, totally away, and now Hashem is bringing something upon him, even though Hashem's supervision is not seen in a revealed way, but deep down Hashem's supervision is there. When the person is affected by that, it's able to touch his essence more deeply. It's not getting... It's not getting interpreted in a revealed way, but somehow deep down he feels, uh-oh, this is because I wasn't close to Hashem the way I should be. And therefore that gives him the ability to totally change his whole approach to life and to Hashem and to everything. Yes, according to this, we'll understand the detail of what Hashem answered. Hashem answered, Hashem, you said what wonderful. I do know, and I'm going to be let it be known who sinned and who didn't sin. What's going to be, says Hashem, is not just. As you said to Hashem, you said you know all the thoughts that, um, and therefore you have divine detail, divine providence on all Jews, even those that were part of the crowd that came with Kera. And you, Meishan Aaron, said, because even on Kol Basra, even on all flesh, even on non-Jews, Hashem supervises, And therefore you're saying, so I should at least, Hashem should at least pay attention to the details as much as usually he does, even to Umm Yisrael, to the nations of the world. Hashem says, more than this. I know, and I'm going to be let known. I'm going to show my detailed supervision in a revealed way. Everybody's going to see with their eyes that Hashem is, 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 uh, is, is busy, is occupying himself in a detailed and inner involved way to save those that didn't sin. Even though we said, even the ones that didn't sin, it's sour. doesn't matter. Even so, Hashem is going to get involved in the nitty-gritty in a revealed way, separate between those that sin and those that sour. That kind of a detailed supervision, even by a person who had sour, in a revealed way, that's only by Yidna, it's only by Yidna. By those that are by the, the nation that's Am Kerova, the nation that's close to Hashem. Bottom line for the Sikh is that uh, Hashem, Hashem on Am Kerova and his on his close people is involved in every every single detail. Thank you.